everyone, my name is Faith Pierre Charles and welcome to Your Story Matters. I decided to start this series to be able to share the stories of so many like-minded individuals like myself. My story is something that has helped so many and I wanna use my survival guide to help someone else in later on in life. And I have an incredible guest with me here who is truly the epitome of being out there in their community, taking space and making sure that their voice is heard and the voice of the voiceless are heard as well. So thank you so much to Dervich Kuti for joining me today. I'm so excited to have you. Hi, Dervi. <laughs> Hi, Faith. I'm so excited to join you in this conversation this morning. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm super excited to get started. I have some incredible questions for you. Derby's story is absolutely incredible, and I had the absolute honor of watching her virtually get crowned Miss New Jersey USA, <laughs> so I'm so honored to have her here and for her to share more of her story with us. So first and foremost, tell us a little bit more about yourself, just a brief scenario so everyone can get to know you a little bit better. Absolutely. So I am Derby Chukudi Miss New Jersey USA 2023. I was born in Dallas, Texas, raised in Lagos, Nigeria. I grew up there, spent most of my childhood, left around, I think, before I turned 17 um, to the U.S. for college. So I went to college in Berea, Kentucky, which is a very small town. Um, it's like 45 minutes away from UK. Um, studied economics and business, but was really always on that path of like looking for something new or something beyond what I already knew. So in college, I didn't want to have like the typical college experience. I was always challenging myself. And my school was work study too. So I was working, going to school, being part of clubs. I was just trying to figure out like, yo, what is this American dream? Because I went to Kentucky, not New York. So I knew <laughs> that the experience was different. And then from New from Kentucky, I moved to New Jersey for work. and now work in New York. So when I think about myself beyond like where I've been, I feel like I'm well-rounded I'm very passionate about life and trying to figure out like what life is all about because I feel like we are all on that journey trying to explore what is for me, who should I be. Um, I'm, I'm, I consider like work um, a, an opportunity and privilege and I take it seriously. So work ethic, shout out to my parents. I feel like every Nigerian, every African out there, they understand. Um, <laughs> everybody must be hard working. Honestly, it pays off. Um, when I'm not working or when I'm not doing pageant stuff, you can catch me reading a book, talking. My gift is like public speaking, which is amazing. I like to say the world belongs to those people who can communicate. And if you cannot communicate, they're going to hire me to do your job. So <laughs> go learn how to speak. I love to travel. I do some painting sometimes, writing. There's just a lot. And I think that's the biggest thing about like describing myself is like multifaceted. There's so many aspects to Derby that even I am yet to even figure out. So just that joy of realizing that it is unlimited. There are different aspects. I can reinvent myself. So I, I think I'm also in that era of reinvention. Yes, I work in finance, but showcasing to people that I can use the skills I, I have, I learned there and leverage with like our clients or like the work I do there to actually learn something in a totally different industry, pageantry, and marry the two worlds together and just show people this is what possibilities look like. It is not easy. I know I make it look easy but it is possible so that's who i am and i'm so excited to get into this conversation yes oh my goodness y'all can clearly see why she was crowned miss new jersey usa <laughs> Not only is she absolutely stunning, but she is so well spoken as well. Everything that you just said, um, it was just absolutely powerful. Everything about, you know, wanting to venture out in life and, you know, coming here, trying to find the American dream, all those different values. I absolutely love that. I'm a first generation American. Both of my parents are from Haiti. So I definitely can understand the value and how much that can make an impact in having that great change. So speaking of talking about bringing finance into pageant tree i actually when i won my title my very last question for my judge was what type of financial advice would you give to someone and uh, i literally was like i am so glad that i used to work at a bank because <laughs> this is not my yeah. field at all whatsoever but it's definitely valuable information that you should have especially being older i represent an age group from 19 to 24 so especially in that age you're venturing out but what was a pivotal moment moment that you know showed you that you know finance is exactly where I want to be at 
So that's a great question because there are different angles to it. Um, so I remember in high school back in Nigeria, we had like this three week um, period. It's what you guys call middle school, but we call everything in high school. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you have three weeks, go do an internship. So I ended up doing an internship in a bank. And it was like three weeks. That was my, my first paid, official paid thing. And it was just like going through all aspects of the bank to figure out what they're trying to do. So that was an interesting experience. I had an auntie who used to work in a bank. And I mean, back then it was like, you got an official car, you look so great. I was like, I'm about this life. Um, <laughs> and then when I went to high school, when I, when I did high school, I was like, you had this thing where you had to choose if either science, social science or arts. I was like, yep, not the science, not me. Arts, yeah, no, social science, the money, let's go. And I'll do economics, I'll read my economics book. It didn't quite make sense to me, but eventually, like it made sense like oh this is how the economy works this is what drives uh, demand supply i was like this is interesting cool and that's where i got like the interest in so when i went to college i was not too particularly hard on like what is my major but i did econ and then for business it was like no brainer even if you're going to be a surgeon you should understand how business works because right. one day if you want to own your practice you're going to use the skills too so that was kind of like the way i thought about it um but the other thing I thought about too, I was looking at different industries and what struck me was like the finance industry influenced every other industry, regardless of what it was. Like when economies were failing, they would lean on banks. And I was like, huh, interesting. Like there's power and influence there. And there's something happening there that I need to learn, I need to see, and then figure out like how this, this is all about, has come to be and how like this really influences other industries. For, for me, that was just like very powerful. I was like, if you're going to start somewhere, start where the power is, see how things are done, and then figure out, like, what makes sense for you. So that's kind of, like, the finance part. But then talking about, like, vulnerability and tearing stories. So growing up, we didn't always, like, talk about money in my household. But we knew when there was no money in the house, which was a good amount of times. And, like, it was interesting because nobody would actually say, like, oh, oh there's no money in the house. But you will be able to pick up different um, reactions or body language. And I was like, huh, interesting. And then super young, like when, when I was 10, my mom passed away and it's different ages for all of my siblings because we are five children. And so I can imagine the impact is different for everybody and including my dad too. So like you began to see realities in life and she was like the finance person. She was the person who like knew how to like manage stuff. And you know, women, like we know how to put things in order. So anyway, so for me, it was like, wow, I was seeing real things in like real life. First of all, losing someone at such an age, you begin to just see real life, regardless of what's happening in the family. And then you begin to see like, oh, things cost money. Things actually affect life and everything, which is how actually um, drove me to be passionate about like my advocacy about like financial literacy and less about like how to make money or saving you know, or budgeting, which is always what we hear, but more about like the mindsets. Like what is your psychology of money? What kind of relationship do you have with money? Because for me, I always said, and I said this in my interviews, like money does not buy happiness. Absolutely. But it's going to determine how happy you'll be. Yeah. No matter what, how you want to spin it. Because you have to pay the bills in the house. If you have kids, you have to take care of them. Even if you don't have kids, like there's so many aspects of our life that require money. So that's where like that whole passion came from. And then you learn a lot about that because like most of what you're talking about you know, at work, in finance, at um, at the bank is money and you're seeing different clients how they handle their money how they interact with money so for me it was all like an educational piece because i knew that you just trickle down to other aspects yeah i love that and i can definitely relate to you um in terms of seeing certain things happening in the household and being like okay it's unspoken, but I know what's going on. Um, but right. I also love that you talked about, you know, having the power of influence. What I think a lot of people fail to realize when choosing career paths is understanding that you have to pick a place where you feel like you can make the most impact. Me personally, I'm studying broadcast journalism. I want to be a host. My whole thing is storytelling, exactly what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. This is something that I'm passionate about in public speaking. It's where I feel I can make the most impact. So I love that you found a place for you despite everything, even though when you started out, you're like, I don't know what this is, but I'm just mm -hmm. going to keep going. You yeah. didn't and I think that's part of the journey. That's part of the journey. Like you're not going to know immediately, but then one of my mentors will say, are you being challenged? Are you learning? Like, do you like the people around you? If you have those three things, then you're in, the, you're in a good place. Mm -hmm. So you can start there and like figure out stuff. Because most of the times, like, what are we? We're young, we're learning. We have, even when we think like, oh, I know stuff. It's like, yeah, life is like, yeah, you don't know anything. Wait till I show you. <laughs> so like, 
at the end of the day, we're on this path of learning and being able to position yourself where you can learn and when you can have access to people who are willing to teach you and groom you or help you, I think it's critical. Yes, it is so critical. Mentorship, being there, having the guidance, again, exactly why we're doing the scenario right here. You don't know who that might be watching that may be inspired to get into finance or not even just financing, but learning more financial literacy because it definitely is key. Education is always key to success in everything. So I love that. So we talked about, you know, how you chose your career path. Now, how did pageantry get into the mix of your life? <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting. Um, on the part of the topic about like always wanting to explore and like see what's out there. I knew somebody who had competed at Miss Nigeria USA and super amazing young lady who is also in New York right now. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That would be something fun to do just for fun. <laughs> and I was also one of those people who people always ask like, oh, are you a model? Like since when I was like younger and I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> I feel like you should model. Even at my <laughs> first internship um, as, as a sophomore, they asked my manager, did you hire models or did you hire interns? I was like, wow, okay. Wow. So, so really it was just like her, watching her experience, seeing how well she did. I was like, this would be fun. So I reached out to the pageant actually. I was like, hey, I'm interested. When is your next pageant day? This was in 2019. And they were like, oh, keep you posted. But they haven't had the pageant since then. Then I was also that person who would spend a ton of time on Google. So people yeah. ask me like, how did you find that opportunity? And I'll say, well, the same, the same Google you're using to gossip and <laughs> watch other people's lives is the same Google I'm using to like, just find out what is out there. So I saw New York, USA. I, to tell you, like, I was really ignorant. I didn't know what this was. I was like, New York, USA. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to apply. So I apply. Um, and then later that, that year, the, since the directors are the same for New York and New Jersey, I actually get a response that I never saw. But basically it was like, oh, you know, you apply to New York, you live in Hoboken, and we're moving applications to New Jersey. And when we're looking for new contestants, we'll let you know if you're interested. So I never saw that response and I actually forgot about it. And then the <laughs> pandemic happened. Yeah. So when I go back to my emails, there's all these e promotional emails about like, are you still interested? Are you still interested? And I never saw them, which is strange because I look at my email every day, even during <laughs> the pandemic. And in 2021, I get a direct email about like, hey, would you like to be interviewed? We have your application. And I was like, interview? Sign me up because I like to talk. So I do the interview and as I'm answering every question, the lady on the other phone is so sweet. She's so amazing. I am just telling myself, yeah, there's no way you're doing this stuff. Like you don't have time. You're doing client work. It's busy. See, I was all the reasons why you could not compete. And then a week later, I get the official invite to like state finalists. I'm like, wait, this is serious. <laughs> and then I have to stop and tell myself like, what really is stopping you? Because it's very easy for us to like give ourselves excuses. Oh, I can't do that. I can't show up. Like, I was like, nah, girl, I know you. You've done stuff. Like, what is stopping you from doing this? And I was just like, honestly, all I see is fear. Fear of being on stage and somebody's like, where are her legs like this? Why is this happening? I was like, I don't need that. You know, I have other life things I'm dealing with. I don't need anybody's opinions on me. And then I told myself, what do we do with our fears? Like you run towards them. Cause if you run away from them, guess what? They're still gonna see them pop up. People are still gonna be like, yo, are you doing these things? So I was like, yeah, that's true. And then it was also important for me to like pray about the opportunity. Cause I just, faith has always been an anchor, especially like all the adversity growing up, losing a parent, trying to figure out things. I mean. I, you also talk you also think about like growing up as a young girl but people are like having all these comparisons calling you names like it's unfortunate because it sounds like those stories are more common than usual it's funny i tell people like wow people just call me ugly and now everybody's like oh my queen i'm like wow yeah this is switch up for me but, right. like, <laughs> but those things are critical because it can actually impact you in adverse ways but i'm just like thank god because like fate was always a big thing I had the siblings who always like speaking to me and say like, oh, this is who God has called you to be. You are loved. Like those little things really go a long way and finding ways to say those things to myself. So anyway, I like reached out to God. I was like, yo, I'm on the phone. What are you <laughs> saying? Are you here or are you not? And I still didn't really hear much. And then one day I was coming back from a friend's place and I heard deep in my spirit. And this one has to be the Holy Spirit because it wasn't me. It was like winning is the cherry on the top. It's who you're becoming that's the most important. I was like, oh, that is deep and I can hold on to that. So that was kind of like the entrance to the pageant journey. There was no like, oh, you know, I didn't even know it led to Miss USA. I didn't even know what Miss USA was or Miss Universe. I knew Miss World, but like, 
I, my mind didn't go there. And I remember talking to one of my friends during our prayer time. I was like, oh, hey, I'm doing this thing. And she screamed. She's like, oh, my God, Miss Universe. I was like, wait, what are you talking about? Like, I was so lucky about everything. I was like, what are you, what, what are, why are you being so, like, hype about this thing? And so that's where it started. So I ended up telling my work folks, people are supportive. They're like, yes, definitely do it. Um, getting ready and preparing. And then I had to stop and ask myself, why are you doing this stuff? Because I already saw, like, I've had people, I had people even say, like, oh, maybe this pattern is not for you. You know, they've not crowned a black girl. Like, everybody's giving their opinions. I was like, wonderful. <laughs> and then I had to tell myself, why are you doing this stuff? What is your why? The why is not the glam. The why is not the camera. It's, it's not any of those things. Like, I love to be in front of the camera, but, like, honestly, I'd rather be in my bed. Like, I, I would I'd rather do other things. I don't need to be in front of the camera to live in my purpose. So I asked myself, why are you doing this? And for me, it was like, you know, prayer is important. We always say like, you know, pray, prayer opens doors, is the key and everything. But I said sometimes, prayer looks like you walking into those doors of opportunities that never existed in your family lineage. So when you look back, I have, ne have a nephew, I'm going to have more. <laughs> Shout out to those who are going to have them. <laughs> I'm going to have more. But then it's like, they're going to look back and say like, oh, my auntie was Miss USA. My auntie was Miss New Jersey, Miss Universe. They don't have to be in pageants, but you just open international doors. You just open doors of possibility. I was like, Woo! yes, that is your why. Mm -hmm. And so the why is not the crown. The why is not any of those things. So when I went to competition the first year, I mean, honestly, I prepared. I spoke to different people. I practiced. I did what I needed to do. But as a wise woman in my life once said, if you're overthinking this thing, just go and see what this looks like. Mm -hmm. So I went. I did in place. But the crazy thing is, on the final night, when they were like crowning, calling the foot runner up, head runner up, and they called the winner and everybody, and people are clapping. You know, obviously, like, it's tough. If you are working towards something, why am I going to be clapping for you when I didn't win? That kind of stuff. So, but you, you they always say, like, you know, you want to show great um, support. And so, and for me, like, again, I was not into this stuff. So I was like, genuinely happy. But I remember catching myself and saying, wait, stop. You are genuinely happy for people that you don't even know. Like, you're celebrating them, like, from the depth of your heart. That is your crown. That's the crown you came to win here. Because nobody teaches you that. There's no rule book on how do you celebrate others when you are going for the same thing. So for me, that was like the pageant experience. I was like, wow. But then I was also wowed by the process. I had to like show up every time. I was still working full time. It was during the pandemic preparing. There's so many things happening. And it's like, whoa. But being able to stay focused, being able on days when you had your moment of doubt, like lean on your support system. Like, hey, say what a prayer for me. Speak into me. Remind me. So for me, I was just like, wow, this... These things we're doing here, and I know people see only the end result. Like, we use the same things in real life. We use the same things at work. This is what CEOs use. Yes. And for me, that was like, I was like, wow. I was like, this is so interesting. This is so powerful. And it just made me respect pageantry on a different level. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the pageantry story. I was like, okay, great. And then after that, you just had a bunch of people, including girls who competed, and were like top five. They're like, you need to come back. I was like, okay, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, it was just very interesting, but yeah. That's actually really beautiful and such a beautiful story because a lot of the reason why I compete in pageantry still, I've been competing since I was seven. And people always say to me, you're still going? Like people from my hometown that know nothing about pageants. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I remember you. You said, you know, you used to do pageants. You want to be Miss America one day. They have no idea what mm -hmm. I was talking about, but they always saw that the dream was planted in my heart for a reason. But I didn't start being successful in pageantry until I learned that bigger picture that you learned from being there in those final moments of just having genuine happiness for someone else I've overcome being bullied in school so going out in pageants and being in an environment where other women were empowering women was different for me I was yeah. so shocked. I was like oh my gosh like we're actually rooting for each other like this is insane but also it was also about having faith in my capabilities and trusting in God's plans for me too mm -hmm. because, you know there's only one crown and banner. Not every single person is going to win. So you have, I always tell people every single time you have to figure out what your invisible crown is going to be. I know yeah. that God has me no matter what. And I always pray for him to give me a peace of mind and understanding for every moment that happens before, but mm -hmm. you have to figure out what the bigger picture is and what your why is. And I love that. And I love that you decided to go back, even though you didn't place, you know, you decided to go back. People saw the incredible things that, obviously you know the reasons why you won so that's just so beautiful now 
talking about you winning um, and being in that position, like, what were you thinking? Because for me personally, I know that I was so nervous for you because <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. I have not seen a black woman crown in a very, very, very yeah. long time. Um, and not only that, but someone to have the background that you do coming from Nigeria. Um, it was just such a pivotal moment for me. I was crying and I didn't even know you yet. You know, I was bawling yeah. my eyes out because I just saw the impact from the computer screen of how much it meant. So what were you feeling in those moments? So I think for me, it was different. In that moment, I can't tell you, like, so one of my former managers is like, oh, Derby, you're so stoic. <laughs> okay, meaning like it takes a minute to process certain emotions and feelings. But I'll tell you like what happened before we came for final competition. So final competition, so my makeup time was super early at noon. And I didn't like that the first day. I was like, wait, the show is at 5.30. My makeup's at noon. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be done three hours before. So so on the last day, though, there's something about called perspective. When you have perspective, it changes everything. So the next day, I realized, I was like, wait, maybe my makeup being at noon is a blessing. You get your hair and makeup done at noon. 2.30, you're done. Yes, you have like three hours where you can come back. And that was perfect because my roommate... That was her time to go for hair and makeup. You can come back. I mean, she was amazing, by the way, like best roommate ever. But you can come back, pull your stuff together, pack whatever, because you're checking out of the hotel. And then you can do the show. Because you win two times in your mind and in person. But here, you're going to win th three times in your mind. Here, because you're doing the show in your hotel room. And then you're going to do it again because you already won. So that was the state of mind. I was like, wow, how interesting. I didn't even think about it this way. So I'm doing like swimsuit. Like you guys thought you saw like, I mean, I love my final swimsuit and I know the rest of the world. I didn't really publish my, my um, performance out there, which is intentional. But the rest of the world, I'm like, wait for Miss USA and you see what the swimsuit was. But I really love my swimsuit competition. Like the, if you look at preliminary, preliminary was good. Mm -hmm. Like and at preliminary, I was having all these thoughts of, because the first time I competed, I forgot my turn. I didn't even know how to turn. I knew how to turn, but I forgot my turn. So many things are going on. So in my head, I'm like, what if I forget my turn? What if something goes, working in heels, I can't wait to shout out my dad nationally. Because when I was younger, since I was like literally born, I always wore heels. Oh. And people would be like, why are you always wearing heels? At some point I stopped in college because I was like, yeah, I'm done. So that really helped because I know that some people start pageants, they're like, I never walked in heels, you have to practice. And I was just like, yeah, bless up that. I did those lessons on, at the foundational years. But then I was just like, what if something happens? So these are the thoughts going on through my head before I'm going to like preliminary. So when I'm doing my turn, I'm like, yes, girl, nothing happened. It's funny because at the, at the end of the runway, when you're doing different turns, there was one more turn I was meant to do on preliminary. And I was like, girl, don't mess this up. You already did good. Let's just leave gracefully. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I agree. Let's leave gracefully. So this next night, I'm like practicing my walk because I'm, I'm like, this is it, girl doing the swimsuit over 10 times. They gave us cape. They told us capes in the morning. I was like, okay, I have no cape in my bag to practice. But guess what? We're going to be innovative because necessity is the mother of invention. I took bed sheets. I'm like, okay, cape. here's your cape. <laughs> like, let's go. And you're in front of the mirror. And it seemed crazy. And then I had a conversation with myself. And I said, listen, I already had strangers say, like, listen, you, you're going to win. You can already tell the conviction in your heart, like, listen, now is your time. But just because God says now is your time, God always works in partnership. Mm -hmm. If you say, God, it's not my time, God is like, okay. But I thought it was your time. You say it's not your time. So I, I told myself, listen, people, strangers you don't know, are like, there's something about you. Even some people from the first year, I know like some teens, you're like, wait, you're Miss New Jersey. The first year I competed. And I was like, uh, okay. So this kind of, I, I told myself, you have all these people that you don't even know saying this thing and you can know you can see the conviction because i didn't just show up there it's like you prayerfully prepare i have my prayer warriors supporting me at the back and the front and everywhere and i said no it's up to you girl i told myself if you go on that stage and this sounds crazy but like i said you go on that stage and you don't win and you don't get the crown just know that it's because you didn't want to get the crown because everything was laid out for you yes but to your point is new jersey you have those track records so i also knew that so honestly people are like oh did you know you're gonna win I mean, I was like, I don't know, because anything could have happened. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like my reaction and thought. But in that moment, honestly, I don't even know what I was feeling. I didn't feel the confetti. I, I was just like, 
I, it was just like a blur and I start crying. And that's the crazy thing about pageantry. And that was one of the short videos I posted before going to pageant weekend on my page. Pageantry reveals. Mm. That is the crazy. I tell people you can't be fake in pageantry. And I feel like that's one thing I respect about it. And I feel like when people are like, oh, what do I need to do to succeed? I'm like, listen, everything you need to do or you need is already in you. You just need to fine tune whatever. Whether that's through practicing, finding your style, but you don't need to be changing who you are because that, all of that is going to show and people are going to be like, who are you? And if the judges are asking who are you, then you've not won because they don't know who you are. Exactly. So in that moment, I'm bursting in tears. Aww. I'm like, I don't cry in public. I was like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? I don't cry in public. This is new to me. But you just showed the authenticity of that moment. Like it was genuinely like, wow. For me, it was like, God gave you a dream. And you literally breaked this dream through diligence, through consistency, through lean on support system and through partnership. Because again, I could have been on that stage and not won. Mm -hmm. And part of it would be like, oh, maybe I didn't think. Again, because there's faith. Your name is faith. Like faith is believing things that have not happened yet and thinking of them as though they are. So yeah. Wow. Woo. Yeah, that whole moment is forever in my heart because when next God gives me like, oh, this, I mean, we are working on other bigger projects. But when next, like, those kind of doubts come in, you're like, hey, if you did it before, you can do it again. <laughs> you can do it again. Yeah. Because what? It's the same God right now. So like that vibe, like, it's just a stamp in my heart that God has done it before. God has brought you here. He will not give you a dream that he cannot sponsor or fund or prepare or win for you. Like, you just have to trust because God cares more about you than the crown. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you feel like you're not ready, God is like, listen, I need you, not this crown. Yeah. So give me three more years, okay? But you, because I don't want to lose you in the process of you getting this crown, because it's pointless. Wow. Oh. Feels like church in here. <laughs> I was just about to say, I got chills. My eyes are watering. Like that's just so powerful and. Again, everything that you're saying, oh, I, I did a good pick. Thank you, God. Shout out to God, because I prayed a lot about, you know, this series and what I really wanted it to be. Being an international title holder, just like you talked about early, opportunities are not just going to be handed to you on a silver platter. You have to go find them. You have to look for them. You have to make them. Um, and this mm -hmm. is something that I've been praying about just, you know, the plans that I originally had, cer certain things weren't, you know, able to happen because of certain things that happened in my life. I was blessed to have a promotion at work and it required me to work more mm -hmm. hours. So the, the cool thing, work, but more work. But, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's just like more work, more time. So I had to figure out how would I be able to, you know, not pour from empty cups. So how can I replenish myself and make sure that, you know, I'm giving the best version of myself while also being true and authentic to the message that I have. And everything that you just said is exactly what I'm trying to tell the people. Everything oh. in your life happens for a reason. The way it happens, nothing. I don't believe in coincidences. Nothing is a coincidence. Yeah. God plants every single step, every single moment, every single breath that you take. It all happens for a reason. But also faith without works is dead. So if you don't work for it, if you don't believe yeah. in the process, if you don't trust in the process, nothing will happen. And the most beautiful thing about your story is your mindset, your mentality through it all. My mental health has force me to change the way I think about so many things. And it's so refreshing and so beautiful to see someone who, yes, faced adversity, but did not let that adversity define who you were. You still yeah. took the opportunities and you surrounded yourself around people who would uplift you, who would empower you. Everything was not always positive, but you made it positive. And that's such a beautiful yeah. thing. And that's why it's so important that we always remember that anything is possible. Impossible, that word itself says I'm possible. I'm possible. Possibilities yeah. are endless. So it's just be so beautiful to, you know, obviously see your beautiful face, read your bio, but hear from you. It's so much different. Like, Obviously, I saw you on stage. I heard you answer your onstage question. So I was rooting for you from the beginning. But it's just like now, it's just like, it makes sense. You know, the face, right. 
and the behind the scenes, all of it adds up and it, it has carved you into this beautiful woman that is going to inspire so many. And literally the questions that I have to, I had to ask you answered all of them. It made my job so much easier. And I love <laughs> you for that. Um, so like, let's just, you know, wrap it all in one little bundle. And you tell me, why do you think your story is important? Why do you think this series is important? And what made you decide to be a part of it? Yeah, I think everybody has a story. Everybody has a voice. And we're always finding, trying to find ways to use our voice um, to share and also to inspire. And I think it's very easy for us to look at social media, look at other people's life and say like, oh, their life is perfect. I hope you don't think that way. If you see my life, <laughs> it's, it's, everybody has a unique journey. And I feel like when we hear people's story, when we see people's lives, whatever parts that we see, we should see, look with the perspective of, oh, interesting. Oh, inspiring. Oh, what can I learn? Or what, how can I even lend to them? But I think that being able to share our story is critical because first of all, you never know. I know, never know who is listening. Like most of the things you experience, it's not just for you. Come on, think about it. That's a selfish thought. Like, oh, I'm experiencing this hardship for me. No, somebody else is going to walk that path. Mm -hmm. And why would somebody else go through the same thing when you have gone through that path and you can say, hey, you know what? Let me save you five years. Here's what you need to know. That's how we make the world a better place. And I think sometimes, honestly, you just need to be reminded you're not alone. Everybody has different struggles. Everybody has different experiences. Everybody's like, oof. I'm in the trenches, but sometimes when you're in the trenches, all you see is you in that trenches. You don't see the rest of the world in the trenches. But when you hear everybody's story, when you hear people sharing like, wow, do you know what I had to go through? I had to be up till like 1 a.m. hustling, then go to bed, then wake up at 6 a.m., like dress up like a beauty queen. Like when you hear those stories, they're like, wow. And I thought I was the only one. And it just gives you that sense of comfort. It just makes me think about like, you know, when you get into trouble, and you're the only one that got the punishment versus when a group of your friends got into trouble. It's, like, oh, yeah. it's that same feeling. And you're like, wow, I'm not alone. If life is not that so it's not so bad. And so I feel like that is why I'm supporting this whole um series, like share your story. Obviously, share your story with who you trust, share your story that you're comfortable with sharing. I mean, it should be the truth. Don't like safe lies, just like share a story. But remember that somebody's always gaining something. And I just also want to touch about the part about the mindset because that honestly probably is probably my biggest asset. One of my bankers I used to work with would say, Derby, they can put you in the Sahara Desert and you're <laughs> going to survive. That's who you are. But guess why I'll survive in the Sahara Desert without water? It's because <laughs> all I see are opportunities. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean I don't see the, the disappointment and any of those things, but I'm always, I'm always praying, help me see the blessing in this in this lesson or the lesson in this situation or the blessing in this tough time. And when you begin to see things that way, you begin to see what you ask for. If you're like, oh, I always have so much problems. Everybody is problematic. All you see will be problems and nobody wants to be around problems. So that's when you're like, oh, and then I'm alone, I'm isolated because nobody is here. And that's where I just think about it. And a lot of the ways I've been able to shape that mindset reading books, listening to, listening to people who are in different spaces than I am, even things I didn't understand. Like I used to read some books like at age eight, I'm like, what are you doing? When my friends are like playing, I'm here reading all these books. And then when life, certain life experiences happen, plus prayer, plus what is God saying, plus the people God sends to you, it just helps and shape. So even those tough times, like you were saying, I know how hard it is when you're like, oh, you know, life is hard. Can I just, you know, leave? Cause, and I tell people, and the whole thing about like suicide, which um, is a pandemic and epidemic is affecting us everywhere. I get it. Like before I came to the US, I didn't get like, wait, why would I like, why would I think of suicide? But when I got here, I was like, I get it. And I get it means like, it can feel lonely at times, but that goes back to sharing your story. If I can hear different stories, I'm like, wow. So even some people say like, wow, my situation is not that bad or my situation is bad, but wow. Like hearing that just even makes me see some gratitude, even in the tough time. And I feel like that's the whole point. We're all trying to see what life is all about, be ourselves, have a good time. And what I've learned about life is life is always going to throw punches. And it's like acceptance. One of the things one of my coaches taught me, because while I'm going through this very intense period of my life right now, which is also exciting, 
you don't have to put um, systems in place to check yourself. So one of them, I do coaching every other week. And she's like, she teaches her clients acceptance. Mm -hmm. Accept that life is going to be hard sometimes. Like, I mean, it's not brand new news. It's, the hardship can come in different ways. But knowing that also helps you have a prepared state of mind. Okay, if I know life is going to suck at some point, how am I going to respond to that situation? Because you own the narrative. And that also like shapes how you think about it. So I think it's just important for everybody to share our stories. Um, it doesn't have to be on social media. It could be in your small friend group. It could be at lunch. Like, listen, when somebody says, oh, how are you? Someone that you trust. You can be like, yo, to be honest, I'm not good. Right. Do you want to hear? Because sometimes <laughs> I'm like, do you, want, do you want to know how I am? Like, let me tell you. 10 million things and they're like, wow, okay. <laughs> that was a lot. But just being able to know that you have somebody to tell something and maybe they have the word for you. I'm always praying. I'm like, God, send somebody with the word or something. I don't know because I need support right now. I need to hear something right now that just re reminds me and encourages me on why I'm on this journey or why I'm here. So your story matters. Yes. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so, so much for taking the time out to share your story with me and let me speak with you and ask you different questions. So that way, you know, your story could be heard, your voice can be heard, but also so, so many people, because I know whoever listens, at least one person is going to have their life absolutely changed by hearing the words that came from your heart. So I am so blessed to have been able to be in this space and hear this, but to know that this is documented and this will be shared for people to see and be able to go back to listen to. I'm just so grateful to you. So thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you tell everyone how they can follow you, keep up with you, and continue to watch your story and your journey to Miss USA. Absolutely. Social media is a place. So Instagram, there be triple underscore two underscores, then Miss New Jersey USA. Yeah, all the content is there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'll be keeping everyone posted. Super excited for the next phase of this competition. Yes, absolutely. Well, you guys, since the dawn of time, stories have allowed humans to connect with each other, give meaning to life. They have the ability to help us learn from others, find understanding and empathy for them in their situations. And this exact interview is a prime example of how we are able to do that. I know that I'm walking away a changed person from this moment, and I hope you are too. So always remember, you got to have faith, faith in yourself, in your abilities, and all that life has to offer. You always have to remember that your story matters. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>